This is the fifth vlog I've done about this observatory build and it's, as you can see, it's almost done so it might be the last actual vlog style video I do for this project. I didn't even have the roof on last time we spoke I think so quite a lot has changed and I've kitted out the inside, got this scope in there, everything. We'll start with the outside and just run through kind of what's changed. So last time this door was just basically full of filler sanded it down and just gave it a couple of coats of the blue paint I already had in the, the shed from I think the previous owners did all these posts with it. I may actually do the rails in blue, I don't know, what do you think? There's a slight bow in the middle of the roof and I said that's a good thing because the water can kind of channel down the middle mainly and then come off the front. So what I've done is I've put another bit of featherboard at the top of the door. It's a little porch so the water comes off here clear it doesn't roll into the observatory it kind of rolls off it other things you can do is you could if you want to keep the rails clean you could actually just like use a brush you know like a paint brush and put it on the inside of there so it kind of brushes the rails as it goes back and forward so i may add that to the outside the rails are plenty strong enough i've not heard any creaking when i've rolled the roof off it all rolls lovely and smooth let's have a look inside now see what we've been doing We've got turnbuckle latches in all four corners. Star of the show here though is I've got the mount set up on the pier and the new telescope. So both the mount and the telescope are new. If you've not seen my other videos, this is a Explore Scientific PMC-8 mount. I'm working that via the Explore Stars app on the Windows 10 laptop. And this is a new range of telescopes by First Light Optics based on the GSO 8 inch Rich Correction. They also do a 6 inch and they do um, a 6 and 8 inch classical Cassegrains and they do 10 inch truss rod versions as well. So, yeah, the GSO, the, the GSO versions but rebadged with Stellar Lyra. The two sessions I've done, I've actually run it off these D-cell batteries. I mean, it comes with battery pack them out. So I thought I'd test that out and see how well it works. And it does work quite well. So I've had my laptop on this little stool over here. Um, but what I'm going to do is build a little, I've got a load of leftover timber. So I'm going to, I'm going to build a little desk. I don't know why I say everything's little, but it will actually have to be quite a little desk. So it doesn't take up too much room in here. I'll probably keep my Heritage 150p kind of under the desk there and that'll be a good place to store it. So when I'm imaging, I can just grab the Heritage 150p, go and plonk it on the table outside and I can have a look around while the camera's snapping away in here. But yeah, anyway, flooring in here is rubber tiles, not rubber, foam, foam, that's the word I'm looking for. So we've got foam tiles and they kind of interlock together. They come in packs and they kind of interlock together like a jigsaw puzzle, I don't know if you can see there. And you can just cut it with scissors. It's a neater job than I thought it was going to be. And it's going to ensure that if I drop something like an eyepiece or a camera or a bit of equipment, it's less likely to get damaged because it's really spongy stuff. Like It's like the inside of a pair of springy trainers. It looks like the inside of an observatory should. And it's also a safety precaution. Now, people pointed out correctly that the bolts for this pier adapter were too skinny and too far apart with the plates and it's going to cause too much vibrations and this was certainly the case when I was doing a star test for this it was wobbling all over the place so what I've done is I've put some bits of wood in for now three bits of wood and that's stiffened it up nicely and that, I could just leave it like that. I could paint those black and just position them in a more sort of aesthetically pleasing manner. Because I quite like the height of this setup. The eyepiece is in a good position. It's in a good position to attach a camera. I use the eyepiece for my go-tos because I haven't got a camera sensor big enough to get the go-to stars in, in the field of view of a camera. So apart from a DSLR, but I'm not using that via a, a laptop. It's just kind of standalone. I don't have a Canon with Backyard EOS or anything like that. So I'm used, I mean, I used a Fuji last night. Had a quick, had a quick shot at the Pleiades. It was near the moon, but I just wanted to see what the field of stars looked like. Very nice, actually, very flat field. My secondary dewed up though, because it was a very wet night. So I may get a dew shield for this. 
I'm sure you guys would like to see the roof rolling off, so I'll I'll do that now. So I've got four turnbuckles as mentioned, so I'll just stop the camera a second while I undo those. Okay, I'm onto the last turnbuckle, so we're nearly there. Now, before we roll this roof off, it, it you know how that's positioned there would have a collision because the walls are fairly low. They're lower than the telescope, so we'll just pop that over on the right ascension, drop it down. And then what was, what, what ugh, I can't speak. So what will happen now is it will just glide over. How, how smooth is that? I've just hit my head though. See how easy that is to push one finger. That will slide all the way back. Now I could, e I could even, secure it if it's windy with this again but if i push it all the way back i've got this bit of metal there just to stop it from going too far this is what it looks like this is kind of the the view i've got the sky to the north there west there east is a bit of a pain in the bum because of that giant bush tree thing and some other trees and houses so with the Explore Stars app for this PMC8 mount. It always suggests a star in Ursa Major to begin with as the first alignment star, which is fine because that's kind of up there. The next three it recommends is stars over there behind that bush or behind that house. So I have to like keep telling it to pick a new star until eventually it'll pick one up in um, Taurus which I can just about see okay from here. So I've done a two star alignment so far and that kind of worked out okay. But it was a bit of trial and error. Now when I got round to attaching my Fuji X-T100 to this to take an image, I didn't have the two inch nose piece to go into the T-ring. I only had a 1.25. So the image I did get has got quite a lot of strong vignetting in, but it's just a test shot and I'm just taking baby steps. Now the good thing is, unguided at 1600 millimeters, I was snap, happily snapping away on Plydes, which was up there. It took me about two hours to get everything set up running, so it was on Plydes with all the niggles I had as a new scope and mount. Um, but once I got on there and I was snapping away on Plydes, it was taking 30 second subs quite happily with round stars, unguided at that incredible focal length, natively F8, 1600 millimeters. So I was actually quite pleased about that. I mean, I'm going to have to no doubt sort out guiding on this, so, so that will be something to do. But yeah, this is what it looks like with the roof off. It's quite a nice place to be, actually. Quite pleased with it. And it's very quick to put the roof back on and off again, so re slide it back over. Next thing to do will be get some electrics in here because I'm relying on head torch, another torch and the batteries for the mount but yeah thanks for joining me until next time be safe tell those clouds to sod off of course and hopefully see you on the next video